So in today's video, I wanted to talk about breeding fish or shrimp and what are some good plants to do that with. So let's take a look at a couple. What's going on guys? Justin from H2O Plants and today we're going to be taking a look at probably like my top, uh, what would I say, top five or six different types of plants. Maybe a couple ones will overlap with each other. And uh, yeah, so this is kind of like what are the best aquarium plants to breed your fish or shrimp. Now. I have done a couple of videos on a couple of these plants, not all of them, but I will kind of briefly run through them. But for ones that I talk about, I will link the videos also up above in the iCard or at the end of the video, you could also check that out. But uh, let's touch on probably my top one that I always recommend to people whenever they're looking at breeding fish is uh, Water Sprite. Now I have done a video on this guy particularly, and he is probably my all-star when it comes to breeding fish and or shrimp, uh, just because it grows really quickly. It has these amazing leaves that just kind of intertangle with each other as it gets bigger and just creates a nice net of just plant matter so that way fish and shrimp aren't, they're not feeling scared or they have places to graze off of. A lot of the times the leaves of uh, plants will kind of collect detritus on them and or biofilm and that'll allow the shrimp or the fish to graze off of it. So this is ideal because it just grows really quickly. It's easy to grow. It doesn't need a whole lot of light and it kind of can do floating, planted, whatever you want to do. And it reproduces rather easily. All you need to do is break off a leaf, stick it in a tank. It'll grow a whole new plant for you. So water spray is my top number one pick for uh, breeding. But a couple other plants that do come to mind that are similar to this, or at least one other one, is water wisteria. I actually did a video comparing these two. Also, you can check that out. But water wisteria, I don't have one, we're actually all sold out right now, but water wisteria is another one that's very, very similar to this, but slightly different. So water sprite, water wisteria, definitely top tier picks. So another one that's kind of similar, but all its own is anacris. This would probably be my number two plant. And the reason being is anacris grows super quick. It doesn't like being planted, it's mostly for floating, but you could plant it if you wanted to. Best way to kind of plant this guy is kind of wedge the stem in between something, not necessarily plant it in the substrate. It will sometimes develop some roots, but it's a very weak root structure and it just likes to be floating. Now, anacris comes in different shapes and sizes. This is regular anacris, then we have anacris denso with much bigger leaves. Those would probably be better for a bigger fry, uh, but this one is better for very juvenile, small, little fry. And um, these will, like, kind of wa like water spray, develop a whole kind of leaf system that will in intertangle with each other. And uh, it's very easy to grow. You can, as you can see, there's three branches coming out of this one piece. You could snip each one of these off. It'll grow a whole new plant. And um, each fragment is really easy to uh, get growing. So very easy to grow. Ba basic beginner plant. Great for anybody, but particularly for breeding shrimp or and or fish. Very good. Next up, kind of similar to that, is hornwort. And this is just a small piece. We obviously sell it in a lot bigger portions. Same thing with the nacris. Usually you get uh, three to six stems in a bag. But um, this is hornwort. Very similar to the nacris. It has very small needle-like leaves. And it is a very fast grower as well. As you can see, it has a ton of branches popping off here. And that just, you know, these are floating plants that are just really easy to grow and they provide a lot of cover, a lot of area for fish and shrimp to eat off of. And overall, that's, you know, that's what you're looking for with these plants. You, you know, like these are really good for the them to have cover and protection. Fish like that, it makes them feel safe and makes it easier to spawn. Also, once you have fry, having protection allows them to kind of stay covered if you have them mixed in with other fish. Although, if you're trying to breed fish, your best bet is put them on their own. Don't, don't put them with anything else that may uh, affect them. So we have water spray, water wisteria, we have anacris, we have hornwort, those are three. Number four would be some moss. Now this is a coral moss and or other types of moss. We also have moss balls and um, we have like java moss, Christmas moss, uh, willow moss, spiky moss. These are all great mainly for shrimp because shrimp will kind of just graze on the surface of this this mat and or if you get it and you tie it to like rocks or driftwood or if you separate this they'll graze on them. These are great at harboring all sorts of uh, food bits that the shrimp and fish will eat off of. Mostly shrimp. Sometimes fish will be grazing in here. But another use for the moss here is when fish are spawning and they lay their eggs, you know, if they're doing their little dance thing that they sometimes do and or meat, um, they will drop their eggs in something usually, I mean, some fish like to breed on solid leaves, other fish like to just drop their eggs and they will actually fall down into the moss and that'll protect them 
from being eaten by other fish because they'll be, you know, kind of within this moss bed and then that'll make it easier for them to hatch safely and then uh, hopefully live a long life after that. So that is four and kind of my last one I guess would be number five but it could kind of technically be number four is we have some Pelia and or Subwasker Tang. Now this stuff is amazing. So this is floating moss. Think of it that way. Moss typically you want tied down to things. You want this to just kind of be tied down to rocks or driftwood. Pelia and or Subwasker Tang will just float around in the aquarium. And that makes it really good because once you get enough of this stuff, it just spreads out and will create a just plethora of areas for the fish and or shrimp to hide in. And it's really good. Now this stuff, we grow it all our own. Um, it's kind of hard to come by. It is a liverwort. Very easy to grow though. Um, it's pretty much very resilient. It doesn't, it doesn't die too easily. Um, and we grow it here, so sometimes we have it available, other times we don't. The mosses, though, if we don't have this available, is another alternative, or any of the floating plants as well. The other alternative to this, though, is Rickia. Rickia is, in my opinion, more troublesome. It does get everywhere, but if your main purpose is breeding shrimp or fish, Rickia is another good choice. I unfortunately don't have a um, piece of that. But Rickia is just this same kind of thing, just a lot smaller, narrower leaves, and that's why it's a bit more annoying because it gets everywhere, it's harder to find. Uh, but this guy is a little bit easier to, if you ever want to get it out of the aquarium, it's relatively easy to um, track down and get out of the tank. That's my top five plants for breeding fish. Now, of course, any plant is good for breeding fish, but these are particularly really good just because they're different characteristics as opposed to most other plants. And they just are overall very easy to grow. So they're great for beginners if you're trying to breed a particular fish for the first time. I mean, guppies, although guppies are very easy, you probably won't need any plants. But if you're looking to get plants to help them out, mollies, anything like that, angelfish will usually like thicker leaves, but they will spawn in other things too. So this is all just good basic stuff to start with and then you branch out from there and if you're a breeder and or attempting to breed fish let me know down in the comments below what kind of plant you're using or what would you recommend to people obviously there's many other out there like guppy grass is a great one didn't mention it but i don't really have that one in stock all that much so it's kind of tough for me to recommend something i don't have and of course if this video helped you at all make sure you hit that like button and if this video helped you as always hit that like button if you're new here and want to learn more about plants and keep up to date click that subscribe button if you want to check out any of our previous videos, maybe seeing what water spray and water wisteria looks like, you click either one of those, and we'll see you guys next time.